By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a pretty interesting match for you. It's a casual game being played at the Knights of Thorn, so we're still showing you matchups from that tournament but this is not a tournament match this is a casual match and what happened is i was walking on the tournament floor and i saw this player he's called rudy and it's it's not the youtube rudy it's a dutch rudy it's an, it's it's another person and he was playing this five color commander deck 100 card deck and uh, i guess you highlander should call it highlander and i said you know what can I ask you a question? Would you be willing to play this on the stream? Because it, it just looks like such a kick-ass deck. And he was at the time playing against another player called Edo. And Edo um, had a, a beautiful deck as well that you're going to see in a, in, in a minute. And this was a 60-card Highlander deck, uh, Brawl deck, sorry, a 60-card Brawl deck. And that makes more sense because at this event, there was a side event where players uh, played Brawl against each other. So that made more sense to me to, to see this deck um, at the tournament. But to make a long story short, when I saw these two cool decks playing against each other, I asked them, would you be willing to pick up your cards and move move to the stream table? Um, you know, and you just start it, maybe start over again. It would just be great to film this. And I was really happy that both of these players said, yeah, sure, man, no, no problem. If, if you want to film it, go ahead. We'll just, we'll go to the streaming table. And, and that's how this movie came to be. Um, so if you'd like to go straight to the games, you can check the description below and it'll take you straight to the games. I'm going to do a very short deck tech. Again, I don't have deck pictures or anything, but I kind of looked looked at some clips of the, of the match itself. So I have an idea. I also asked the players, okay, what kind of decks are these? So I can explain it a little bit to the viewers here, to you here on YouTube. So I'm first going to discuss the decks very, very briefly. But if you like to go straight to the game itself, click on the timestamp below and it'll take you straight to the games. For now, let's take a look at both of these decks. Now, the first deck that I would like to take a look at is the deck from Dutch Rudy. Now, Dutch Rudy is quite the opposite of YouTube Rudy, where YouTube Rudy says, put all your old school cards in a binder, lock them away uh, in a cellar, the dry place, triple sleeve them, put them in a vault if you have one, and don't look at them for 50 years. Dutch Rudy is quite the opposite. He says, hey, I've got cool cards. Why not put them all together in a 100 card deck? and actually play with them and enjoy them. And that is exactly what he's doing in this matchup. He is playing a five color Highlander deck. I don't believe he has a commander, so it's kind of weird, but um, these are some of the cards. When you're playing with five colors, one of the cool things you can do is just take out all those old legends, all those maybe unplayable legends, they're actually quite good and play them. So here you see the, the, the first card here at the front, the Xira Arian which is quite a good card. It's a flying three. It's a, for three mana, you get a one, two flying that actually lets you draw cards, which is which is pretty good, you know, I have to say. And then the card behind that is Tetsuo Umezawa. And again, this card is three mana as well. Of course, the problem with the casting is that there are three different colors. So red, black, and blue. And then you can pay red, black, black, and blue. So for some reason, not just red, black, and blue. No, you need an extra black. <laughs> You can tap it and it does something pretty cool. It says destroy target tapped creature or target blocking creature. Tetsuo may not be the target of an enchant creature spell. So meaning, I guess the most played enchant creature spell in old school magic is um, control magic. So I guess you cannot steal it. Also, you cannot put an enemy dead on it. So it's 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 pretty, it's actually a pretty relevant ability. And this, this guy can just destroy tapped creatures like a royal assassin but it can also destroy blocking creatures as well, making it very, very useful. And then there's another card here behind there. That's the Hezazan of Tamar. Beautiful art by Richard Kane Ferguson. I'm, you know, people that follow the channel know I'm a big Richard Kane Ferguson fan. Uh, this card is way more expensive than the other two. It's seven mana, it's red, it's a forest, it's white and it's four. So for seven mana, you get this Tamar guy and it says on your next upkeep after Hazazan is put into play, put X token sand warriors into play where X is the number of lands under your control. Treat these warriors as one, one white, green and red creatures. If Hazazan leaves play, all sand warriors are also removed from the game. So these are, I think the first warriors in magic and they're sand warriors. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. 
And obviously when you're playing with all these different colors, what's really important is uh, color fixing and card draw. You want to draw a lot of cards so that you can find the right colors. So that's why I'm showing you here the Tome. Obviously it's a classic, it's going to draw your cards. And also the Sylvan Library is very important here, let you find the lands you need. And then there's also the Bazaar of Baghdad, so just drawing a lot of cards. Obviously you can draw two, then you have to discard three, but I'm sure he has some way of getting things back out of his graveyard. I believe his deck is fully powered, so I'm expecting to see a Time Twister in here, but I'm, I'm sure, you know, when you play these decks, you have a lot of tricks up your sleeve. So I'm really looking forward to see all the little combos in this deck. Uh, there's also Diamond Valley here, probably giving him life, buying him time. So that can be very um, useful. So this is the five color Highlander deck. So a hundred cards, all the colors, a lot of cool stuff and remember because it's highlander it's a one-off of everything only the basic lands um only there are only multiples of the basic lands in this deck okay so let's take a look at the other deck so he is playing against Edo, and Edo has brought to the table or is bringing to the table a oaken shield deck so a brawl deck 60 cards one of each except for the basic lands and his commander in this deck is Edun oaken shield so let's take a look at that card first uh, it's a black, a red, and a green for a 1-2 creature, Summon Legend, and it reads tap, or actually pay green, red, and black, and tap, select one creature from your graveyard and place it into your hand. So it can bring back creatures. Now, that's exactly what this deck wants to do, because this deck is full of creatures, almost all of them are creatures. I believe he, he plays with a black lotus and, and a diamond valley, and those are one of the only um, you know, non-creature cards. I guess, you know, Diamond Valley you can put under lands because obviously he has to play lands to cast uh, uh, these. And let's have a look here. What I really like is to see like a classic creature like War Mammoth. I think it's really cool. Obviously, Cabal Ghoul can work really well because it says at the end of each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on the ghoul for each other creature that died during this turn and was not regenerated. So I can definitely see some synergy there. Uh, he's also playing with the Orcish Artillery. Um, interesting to see what he wants to do uh, with that. I believe he also plays with, the, with, like I said, the Diamond Valley, which is great because it can send creatures to his graveyard. So I'm expecting some more tricks here where he can get creatures into his graveyard and kind of have an advantage because of that and then take them out again with the oaken shield maybe also playing with animate dead although i don't think he plays with animate dead because it's almost all creatures i'm just thinking out loud right <laughs> right now uh, but i'm really looking forward to see this deck connection and, and, and see what kind of synergy Edo has made with these Edo and oaken shield the whole idea already of saying okay um, I'm just going to play with a lot of creatures because I have Oaken Shield and when they die I can bring them back. That kind of makes sense. Maybe we'll even see a Bull Lightning. I'm just, just it's in my head now, play Bull Lightning, it dies at the end of turn, bring it back again. Obviously it is difficult to cast Bull Lightning in a three color deck because it's, it's three red, so maybe it's not ideal. Um, anyway, I think this deck, the biggest enemy of this deck is Swords to Plows here. But a good thing is he's playing against a Highlander deck. So if he plays with Swords, it will only be one Swords to Plows here. So that won't be that big of a deal. So this is the deck of uh, Edo. So it's a creature deck built around Oaken Shield with the colors green, red, and black. So it's a Brawl deck. So let's take a look at the games. Game number one. So we have Rudy on the left and we have Edo on the right. So the five color highlander deck 100 cards is playing on the left the brawl deck with the oaken shield is playing on the right and there's a savannah to start here from the highlander player let's see what the brawl deck can do here playing a mountain a black lotus cracking the lotus and <laughs> <laughs> this is yes this is what you want to do use a black lotus to cast a war mammoth uh turn one a three three trample classic creature from alpha so one of the first creatures to see light in the game of magic the gathering attacking you're dealing three damage really nice to see this wow i've never i've never seen this before and there's a chain lightning on the war mammoth 
And he is sending it back though. That's why he's tapping those two red mana. So that means that uh, Rudy is going to 14 here. And really nice. I've never seen a War Mammoth being cast with a Black Lotus. That's a first for me here. And there is a Granite Gargoyle. And it looks like the entire deck of Edo seems to be black bordered, or at least so far. And now he's activating his land tax if you're wondering why he's going through his deck. So he can look up the basic lands that he needs, which is pretty vital when you're playing a five color deck. So I guess land tax is a very good inclusion here. And I wonder when we are going to see those legends. And if I can remember all the names of all those legends. So he's going to pass it on to Edo to shuffle. And remember it's a 100 card deck. There he goes playing a basic swamp now that he just looked up. Tapping for mana here. The Felwar Stone can also be of great help by the way. Oh and this is nice. Uh, Xia. I talked about it. Let's uh, let's get her up on the screen. And there she is. Xira Ariane, the Legends card, a 1-2 flying creature. And if you tap black, green, and red, then you can draw a card. So just for three mana, you can draw a card. If, if you have all the different mana. Uh, in the meanwhile, we see an attack by the Granite Gargoyle. So that means that the commander player is going to 12 here. And again is able to activate the land tax. I wonder what cards Edo has in hand. I know he plays, you know, we know he plays very creature heavy. So I wonder if his card is just full of very expensive creature cards that he's unable to play at this point in the game. So getting three in hand and also having that card draw creature there. It's one of those creatures that you don't see often because it's so hard to cast. Oh, look at that Bazaar, Bazaar of Baghdad. That can be very helpful as well, especially in combination with that land text because you can draw two and simply sack some or discard some basic lands. Ooh, that Royal Assassin can become a problem. And there he goes, activating the Bazaar, probably going to discard some basic lands. And unfortunately, we cannot really see his graveyard, but I do believe those are two basic lands. Is he going to tap the Mana Vault? He's not. He's passing turn. And that Royal Assassin is great defense. Tapping three here. Okay, playing the Troll. Attacking. Interesting choice here because next turn he can use that Royal to kill the Granite Gargoyle. Hmm. Interesting. And he is also playing a Diamond Valley, so perhaps going to activate the Diamond Valley now. No, he's not doing that as well. Interesting. Oh, he is. He is doing it. He just needed a moment there. <laughs> Never mind. See, at least he gets two life. Maybe he has some graveyard synergy that he's planning to use later on. Or he simply wants to put ultimate pressure on uh, Rudy's deck here. In the meanwhile, Rudy is doing a lot of stuff. Drawing cards, using his bazaar, using his land tax, whatnot. Playing a preacher here, and that can be a problem for the troll. Of course, he has that diamond valley, so he can choose to sack so that the preacher is not unable to take it. But blocking here with the factory, regenerating the troll, passing turn again. And um, if by any chance you haven't read the flavor text of the Uthan Troll, then I can recommend it. So if you have a moment, look it up and read the flavor text. It's very entertaining. Paying how much mana here? Oh, and this is the, the Hazareth of the, the, the Sand Warrior token dude. Let, let me get it up on the screen. And there we have it, Hazazan Tamar, and it reads, on your next upkeep after Hazazan is put into play, put X token Sand Warriors into play where X is the number of lands under your control. So you treat this as 1-1 one, one warrior tokens. And this is interesting. He's also, he's only putting five tokens on there. I think they should be seven because the Bazaar of Baghdad is a land and the Mishra's Factory is a land. Or am I missing something? Maybe they're discussing this now as well. I'm, I'm not sure. 
or maybe they're just discussing the card in general. It's not a card you see that often. There are some tricks with it. Some decks that revolve around it, land heavy decks, obviously, but I've never played against one. I would love to, by the way. So if you have a Hazazan deck, let me know in the comments below and let's uh, schedule a match. There's an attack here. And in the meanwhile, we see that Edo has played that Will of the Wisp, at least having a blocker. But it's not looking very good for him at this point of the game. And I guess he needs to get rid of that preacher, but that's difficult because he's just playing with creatures. I'm not sure if he's playing with any removal. And look at that, deciding to untap the Sextral, killing it with the Royal. And now he has his hands free to snatch another creature. Obviously he's getting the Will o' the Wisp from Edo. And actually that's, that's, that's pretty nicely played. You know, this is a way of getting two creatures on the board and at least being able to play that Sheevan Dragon. And we saw a card there it was going really quickly. I believe it was a Demonic Tutor. So that means he can go through his deck. <laughs> he's, and he's finding his only sorts to Plowsiers. Immediately ki killing the Sheevan Dragon. And attacking with everything. So that's, that's just brutal. And there's an untapped step here. And look, just, just look at the board state here. And I, I believe this is a good decision. Just, you know, you're not going to win this anymore. But uh, look at that. Uh, beautiful. Seeing all those legends coming onto the battlefield. I'm really looking forward to the second game. And hopefully we can see Oak and Shield in action as well. Game number two. And so we have the... Oh, and there seems to be a mulligan there by the uh, Brawl player here. Nice. Goblins of the Flark. I like that. Oh, and look at that. Oh, I like that as well. There's so much happening already. Um, strip mine on the Library of Alexandria. I like that because if you get a library game, it's kind of boring. So that's uh, that's a good thing you had that strip mine there. Because I want things to be a little bit, a little exciting for this one. And there's a discard of the clone. Again, a Black Lotus. This time using it to cast that beautiful Sengir Vampire. It, Signed there. It's looking great. Ooh, Sylvan Library. And of course, this is the, the downside of playing a deck with only creatures is that you have very little removal. So you actually just have to put the pressure on. Showing his hand there, um, I think I saw a War Mammoth and a Concordian Crossroads. The middle card was hard to spot, but it, it does look unfortunate because what he needs is... Lance. Oh, and look at this Legends card. Um, Tetsumo. Let's get it on the screen. Is it Tetsumo? And there we have the card. It, yeah, it is Tetsuo. Umezawa. And what this card can do, it can destroy tapped creatures, but also blocking creatures. Uh, and again, I kind of feel that the Brawl deck definitely needs some removal. So look at that. He is on eight. And he does need a double black, actually, to use it. Exactly, so he cannot use it yet. So that can maybe help here. And the Brawl player, Edo, still having mana issues, unfortunately. Oh, look at that, playing the Velwer Stone. That means that next turn he can use it because Edo has a Swamp. So he can use the Tetsuo. And does he... Can he find a land here? He can, but it's not green mana. It is another creature though. So that's pretty good. He's on three. This is going to be very close. If he can find some kind of creature removal and he can use his Tetsuo together, then he is pretty much saved. Can no longer use his Sylvan, of course, being only on three life. So he cannot draw an extra card. This is difficult. Remember, he also has that Diamond Valley, so he can also choose to play out a bigger creature. 
Ay, 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 how can he win this? The Goblins of the Flark is unblockable because of Mountain Walk. And next turn, he can also activate his Mishra's Factory. So he's now doubting. If he used the Tetsuo to, for instance, let's say, remove the Sengir Vampire, there's still three damage on the board. But of course, he can use the Diamond Valley to survive. I mean, he has to go full out here. So using the Diamond Valley, meaning he gains three life, he loses three, so he stays on three. Ooh, playing a Suchi, he's second the Suchi, going to seven, using the four mana to cast the Icy, but that does mean he's going to take three more damage. Oh, look at that, full of green cards. He has no green mana. Going to four life here, it looks like he's gonna stay afloat thanks to the Diamond Valley. If he can now play another creature, he's pretty much safe, at least for the time being. Does he have another Suchi? No, he does not. Tapping three. Are we going to see the uh, Xia again? The creature that can draw in cards, the legendary creature. <laughs> and yes, we are. So there we have the one, two flyer. And again, he's gonna attack, of course, putting full pressure on. He's probably gonna tap. He's gonna tap the Goblins of the Flark, attacking now. Oh, and finding again that Swords to Plows here. So he's very lucky finding that Swords. And now he can start drawing extra cards as well. So I feel like he's kind of coming back. Uh, but he's doing nothing so far, passing turn. There's an Hypnotic Spectre, that's good news for the Brawl player. And let's see, of course, having that ability to draw an extra card with that Legend there on the board and having that Sylvan to go through the cards that you need. I think I saw a Time Twister there, but that would be super risky. Paying four mana here. Ooh, the Abyss. Ay, that's painful. Having to sack, he's sacking his Goblins of the Flark. He knows that his Hippie is gonna, gonna get tapped down by that Icy Manipulator. And he has to somehow get green mana first. Then maybe play out the Concordant Crossroads. And just try to f flood the board with creatures, but it is looking very dire here. At least this is the green mana playing the crossroads to possibly being able to play a lot of creatures in one go and just attack. And there we see the Tetravas going to a 2-2 creature and that means he's made two Tetravite to possibly block creatures with haste that are trying to attack that six life total. But it's, it's looking very comfortable here for the Highlander player, even though he's just on six. And we see, oh yeah, we see him playing a recall, taking back a card when very quickly couldn't see what card it was. Um, paying three here, what is he going to do? Is he going to play the Druid and then untap a land instantly and play another green card? That's, it looks like that's what he's doing. Playing an elf, also being able to use that mana, by the way. Tapping the elf down. Of course, he has to sack one of those two creatures. I think he's probably going to sack the elves of Deep Shadow. Beautiful art, by the way. And look at that, he can attack straight away with the Suchi. That means Edo's going to 12, having to sack the elves of Deep Shadow. Playing the scavenger folk, being able to, s ooh, this is good. I do love to see that Lay Druid in action. It's just a beautiful card and, and it's so great to see Lay Druid. Ooh, this is nice. Attacking, unfortunately he has a Tetravites holding him back. Next turn he will have to uh, sack the Lay Druid probably. 
But just look at these beautiful board states and these beautiful cards. This is why you play old school magic to see these these cards in action or play against these cards yourself. Play with them yourself or play against them yourself. And oh, wow, I was in, in the middle of my story, but look at that, another Sheevan Dragon. So we've got two black border Sheevans on both sides of the board. Amazing, guys, beautiful decks. And, uh, and there we see a victory here by the Dutch Rudy. Uh, that means 2-0, but I do believe they've played a third game. And you know what? Let's look at that game as well. This is so entertaining. These decks are so beautiful. I mean, they deserve more time here on the on the channel. So let's go to game number three. Game number three. And let's see if the Brawl deck can get there. They, they, oh, man. Has to take a mulligan again. And he had to do the same thing in uh, the second game. What I wanted to say is, I mean, he was getting really, really close. I mean, he had Rudy on three life. But hey, really, really close in Magic is, is just not good enough. I know what it feels like. And that's the hard thing when you're playing such a beautiful deck, like the deck he's playing, the Oaken Shield deck, creature-based, is that you want to finish your uh, opponent with combat damage, and that can be quite tricky. And there's an Ivory Tower turn one there by Rudy. Tapping three here, playing that Lay Druid. And Lay Druid is also works really well with Mishra's Factory, by the way, that we now see Rudy putting on the board. Another mana, at least he has enough land. It looks like this turn has four land, even five, because he can then tap one with that Lay Druid. So let's see if he's able to Play something. Oh, and there we have it. The commander, Oaken Shield. An Oaken Shield you can tap and it brings back a creature from the graveyard. Also playing his Crypt Sprites because he untapped his forest with his Lay Druid. And now he has a lot of creatures. One of them can fly over to Mistress Factory. So that's exactly what he's going to do here. And using that Lay Druid again, playing an If Biff Afrit. This is a 3-3 creature from the Arabian Nights and it's a living hurricane. So any player can play, pay one green and then it deals one damage to each creature with flying in each player. And of course, Rudy is playing with five colors. So if he can find green mana and he's on 25, by the way, not on seven, playing that preacher again. And that's a big problem, preacher. It's very painful, but maybe he can now do a full-on attack because the Mishra's Factory is tapped. That's what I would, that's exactly what he does. That's what I would do. That's what he does as well. He's attacking with everything, at least dealing some damage. And that means that Rudy is now on 19 or 20. Okay, he's on 21, gaining some life from the tower, maybe. <laughs> this is exactly what, uh, what I just said. The opponent can also use the green mana to activate if biff, meaning that Edo is now losing two of his flyers himself. If he attacks, he's probably going to activate. Oh, he's actually activating Preacher before. Interesting, what to give away here? Giving his Elves up Deep Shadow, knowing that the Goblins of the Flark can be useful later in the game. And here we have some nice um, combo action because Diamond Valley and Oaken Shield work together very well because he can attack, or I mean, he can sacrifice a creature to Diamond Valley, gaining some life, and then bring back that creature with Oaken Shield. There's an attack by the Ifbif, and that means that Rudy is now on 17 life. But we kind of know now how the five color deck works, it, it needs a lot of time. So if you. Give it a lot of time. If you let it go into mid game, he's probably gonna gonna win the game. Taking a damage here from the Elves of Deep Shadow, playing the Abyss. I wonder if he can then sack in response to the Abyss. I'm not sure. End of turn using the Oaken Shield to bring back the Scrip Sprites. I guess he cannot do it or else he would have done it. Um, sacking here the Goblin. Oh, and this is a nice play. I like this. What I want to say, Goblin of the Flark is being sacked to the Abyss, and then he plays a Wheel of Fortune. Nice, very nice game so far. And we see that Oaken Shield and the Abyss are kind of keeping each other in balance here. Untapping a green there with the Lay Druid, using the green, 
playing a Birds of Paradise. Interesting that he's not attacking with the FB for Freed. Maybe that's kind of a missed opportunity here. Could have dealt three damage. And Rudy is slowly regaining his life total because of that ivory tower. And using his green mana now to kill all the flyers. Using that if biff option. So here we kind of see what can happen with an if biff of It can also work against you, I guess. I, I personally, I find it a little bit of an underplayed card, the If Biff of Freed. I, I would definitely consider playing it in a mono green deck, for instance, because it can deal direct damage. Now he's sacking the If Biff of Freed. Interesting choice. Perhaps I would have chosen the Lay Druid. Then again, I don't know what's in his hand. Tapping two red here. Is there a Sheevan coming? No. <laughs> nice. Orcish Artillery signed black border. We don't see that often. An Orcish Artillery is a 1-3 and you can tap it and it deals 2 damage to any target and 3 damage to itself. So it can actually kill the, um, the Preacher. But I think the Preacher is now going to have to be sacrificed. Oh, now I see what he's doing. He's stealing Creature from the Brawl player to sack to the Abyss. Okay, it took me a while to figure that out, but that's that's a really nice synergy, by the way, the Abyss and Preacher. I've never seen that before. Very cool. And now he has to choose between Oak and Shield or Orcish Ar Artillery. Obviously, he wants to... don't want to lose any of those two cards. And he wants to use the Artillery to shoot down the Preacher. Is he able to do that in his upkeep before he dies? I think that's what they're discussing now. So can he activate? I think he can. So he's killing the Preacher. And then he's sacking the Orcish Artillery. I think that's a great play. Playing the birds now. Remember, he needs at least one creature to keep feeding to the Abyss if he doesn't want to lose Oaken Shield. So that's probably why he picked Birds of Paradise because it's cheap to cast. But it's also holding him kind of hostage. Sacking the Elves of Deep Shadow. And this is a very interesting game. I do think that Rudy eventually will win because he's just... He seems to have stronger cards for late game. More controlling cards. And of course he has artifact creatures that work really well with the Abyss. Let's see what he's going to do. Tapping too white here. Playing a balance. That means he loses his creatures. Ay, 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 ay. And I think that's kind of the story of this um, matchup. Of course, it's a weird matchup because you're looking at a Highlander deck playing a commander or a, a brawl deck. And, you know, the, the, the brawl deck for, for Ada was really made for the format that they're about to play in the side event. So it's not really you know, a match, it's just a casual match. But I, th I think what we're seeing here is the all the answers that the Highlander deck has. And of course, the, the Brawl deck here with Oaken Shield being a really cool deck, but being kind of one dimensional, you know, based on creatures here. And I think game number two really showed the strength of that deck is, you know, when you're able to, to just flood the board with creatures and deal a lot of damage quickly. And there's the Nef's Asp and the Elvish Archers. But now we see a clone on the Tetravus. And that probably means, I don't know why he's getting 10 euros here. <laughs> give, give me some money. I'll go sit next to it. But anyway, um, yeah, this is pretty much game. But very entertaining to see these decks. Let me know what you think of Brawl as a format and Highlander as a format in old school. Do you enjoy playing it? Do you play it yourself? Um, and l l let me know maybe what your favorite card was in this matchup. I think mine will will have to be 
one of the legends that we saw being played here in this game. I'm not sure which one, but you hardly ever see him getting getting any play. I'm also tempted to say Lay Druid because I just think it's such a beautiful card. In the meanwhile, we see some shuffling going on because of that Winds of Change. A card that I usually see when I'm playing against um, one of those uh, uh, enchantments. What's what's it called again? Underworld Dreams decks. That's the word I was looking. The card name I was looking for. Underworld Dreams. There we see some more tapping, 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 and it's just you know another demonic tutor and pff, a lot of stuff going on here on the side of Dutch Rudy. I mean, he's, he's, he's made a flavorful deck, but that doesn't mean that it's a weak deck. It's just, it's, it's full of strong cards. And I believe he also gave it a, a name. And I can, I can look it up here. Let's see, it's something with bold, Bowls to the Wall, I believe it's called. Yeah, Bowls to the Wall, that's the title that he gave this deck. And in the meanwhile, we see some really cool action from Edo. Wait a minute, he's played a Concordant Crossroads? Sheevan Dragon? Gabal Ghoul? And Stone Throwing Demons? Uh, wow, Devils I mean, Stone Throwing Devils? That's cool, at least he's, you know, he's going full gas. Oh, and we see a control magic, and of course that responds with the Diamond Valley. That does mean that end of turn Gabo Ghoul is getting some counters for what it's worth. You're forgetting the counters, exactly. And Rudy is pointing it out, he's getting some counters. Okay, only one counter, but still. Oh, cool gremlins. Very cool. Phyrexian gremlins. It's a card from the antiquities, and you can tap down an artifact with it. I believe it's three to cast. It's kind of a black relic barrier for one mana extra, but it's also a creature. Old man from the sea. So you can actually take over the Phyrexian gremlins if he wants to. That would be kind of funny. Yeah, and that's it. That's game again. It's just, <laughs> it's just the, the Highlander deck is just packed full of brutal cards here. Um, so thank you both, Rudy. I'm just gonna call you Dutch Rudy so people don't mix you up. Uh, Dutch Rudy and Edo, thank you very much for for playing this game in front of the camera. And um, um, you know now I'm able to make this cool movie. Uh, like I said, let me know what cards you enjoyed most of this matchup. Let me know what you think of Highlander and Old School Magic, what you think of Brawl and Old School Magic. Do you actually play these formats? Um, if so, what kind of, you know, what, what are your favorite cards to brew with? I'm just curious because after seeing this, I'm thinking about maybe making a Brawl deck uh, myself as well. For now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk Old School Magic. And if you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on one of the links that is appearing right now or just simply visit the channel. We have more than 100 videos related to old school magic. If you want to support me, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by liking, by subscribing, of course, if you're not yet a member, by leaving a comment, by sharing it. And we see some nice playmats, by the way, um, by sharing the channel with your friends. And... Um, last but not least by not using an ad blocker because by if you look at the ads i earn a little bit i mean you can skip them but just not don't block them you know that that helps me a little bit anyway enough rambling thank you for watching and see you next time <laughs>